basic fire lay and basic ferro rod technique class. So maybe maybe kind of basic for some of you guys, but it's kind of nice to, to revisit. So if some of the bark next to it was wet, this stuff was just hanging off the tree like this, just blowing in the wind. And it only takes an hour or two to get this back dry again. And also, if I fluff this up, I put it in my cargo pocket, and my body helps to dry it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to process some of this cedar bark down and make a tinder bundle or a fire lay. And after I'm done with the fire lay, I'm going to explain the two types of ferro rod techniques that I Like I said, it rained a ton and we put some oak, or I put some oak down here because this ground, these, all these ashes are just soaking wet. So you need to have a, a fire base down here for it. Basically, if you don't, you can still make things work, but it's gonna, it's gonna really complicate the process because that, that moisture is just gonna sap the heat, sap the, sap the fire right out of your, out of your fire. Lid. I generally don't get too scientific, to be honest with you. Most of the time when I do a ferro rod fire, I start the tinder bundle on fire, and then I just start laying these smalls on top of it. There are some people that, that build the, the TP or build that, that first. I'll do that if I'm doing a lighter. In other words, I would, if I was doing this for a lighter, I like to get my tinder bundle on, on fire first because that way what happens is you get that big mass of, of material, combustible material here, all your smalls, everything, and you can't get your foot in there, I've found anyway, you can't get your foot in there right, you can't get a good strike on it because all your material is in your way. So I want, I want to be able to concentrate purely on my tinder bundle and then put my, my material there on are basically top. two types of ferro rods that I run across. There is a soft type and there's a hard type. I'm not going to get into the technical specifications, but basically the soft type has more magnesium in it. The harder type, in my experience, puts off a hotter, hotter spark. The softer type, the sparks last longer. So there you go. I've got a 3 8 here, and I've got two half inches. These two half inches, one of them's the harder kind, and one of them's the softer kind. This big one, is the softer kind. This is actually the Pathfinder, the one that they sell on the Self-Reliance Outfitter store. This one is just a random one that I, I get from eBay. My two methods for striking these are what Justin likes to call the pull and pray, which I thought was pretty apt. But anyway, you, you lodge your hand up against something solid, and then you take your ferro rod, and actually it takes quite a bit of pressure to get the spark off, but you pull up and back very quickly, and that's gonna shower your sparks, hopefully, in your tinder bundle. And it actually helps if your spine of your knife is better than this one. That's the softer one. Now, the back of your knife method is fine. That's great. But you can see mine, I've been practicing with mine quite a bit. And you'll actually wear that spine down.
But you're going to have to do some spine maintenance. If you if you continually practice over and over and over again with your the spine of your knife, you are going to have to do some spine maintenance and sharpen it just like you do your blades. The other method that works or that I use is the plant method, basically. And if you're going to use the back of your knife, you I could have my tinder bundle basically right on top here and then push down on. Direct with sparks so much better. And you know, if I don't know if any if any of you guys have followed my deal or whatever, but I've had a surgery in my my right hand, and my wrist is just even from doing that pulling back is starting to ache. So I mean, it's you need quite a bit of pressure on there on your ferrule rod. And now I can do the pressure on my left hand, and plus direct those sparks right where I want them. This is the softer ferro rod. I personally like that method a lot better. I said, who makes that sheath for you? Uh, Justin Wolf with Wolf Customs. Oh, okay. I was yeah. just curious. <laughs> so like oh, I was saying with the... The shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Start my fire here and transfer it over here. I've got these little tiny pieces of, like I was saying, these are small pencils with lead size twigs. And I'm just going to totally randomly place them, mostly with this method, on the back side and leave this opening for me to put my, my match or my on fire tinder. All this stuff was collected just just a few hours ago, actually, right after it stopped raining. One thing I see a lot of guys do is take a look at how long this all is. I, I see a lot of guys, they, they concentrate on how thin this particular material is right here, which is pencil lead size. That's what everybody you know says. If you can get smaller than pencil lead size, you want the smallest you can possibly get. But I see guys concentrate too much on how small this is, and so they're going to break this fork apart and maybe use this pencil slightly smaller than pencil later on in the process. I don't do that because what I want, this is just my base now. This may not catch on fire right now. It's going to add to the fire later on. But I'll put that down there, and now this small is at least a third to maybe even a half the distance of that stick past the tinder bundle. So that's going to, it, it just ensures your fire, the flames will, the, the heat rises above the flame and that heat will actually catch this stuff on fire better than if you just lay everything super tight down on top of your tinder bundle. It, it just gives it a lot more air, it, it, the heat disperses better across the smalls. So, like I said, I see a lot of guys just snapping these little bitty things and then laying them down like that. I, I find it's much better to get those up above the tinder bundle. You know, if it's small, go ahead and put it on there. If it's, it, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Something like this, you know, maybe snap that right there. And all these little branches and stuff, all these little tiny smalls are above my tent. I can't remember what the saying is right now, but basically the gist of it is fire likes chaos. So, you know, you don't want them all perfectly. That's another thing I see people do, is they'll take these smalls, and once they get their tinder bundle going, they, they line them all up perfectly right across the top of their tinder bundle, just like that. And basically what you're doing 
once you get a lot of them on there, is you're starving the middle of your fire from oxygen. This, the flame licks up through the base of this, of these sticks of this firelight, and you know if it's all closed down, there's no way, there's nowhere for that flame to go. That flame can't get up through and breathe. I mean, for me, man, fire is like a like a living, breathing thing. I mean, you have to know what it wants in order to be successful at it. So it wants space. It wants fuel. You know, it's it wants chaos, it wants a place to grow to. You can put a lot of sticks and a lot of material on this fire lake, so long as the very top, the very chimney of the teepee is open. Like if you ever see a teepee that some Native American set up or whatever, there's always a smoke hole at the top. As long as you got a smoke hole or several smoke holes or whatever, you can keep adding these sticks. I'll even take, if I, if I look back at my pile and I'm like, oh, I got some of these really tiny ones. I like putting some, some thicker ones in there and then doing the smaller ones even across the top of that. What that'll do is that'll give you several layers of fire. The base is, is obviously where your, the most of your fuel is and the most of your heat is. But if you get fire up into here, and this, this thing is going to collapse on itself. So you got a lot of heat down here, plus you got a lot of heat up here because I got a little tiny small up here maybe on fire. And it's, it's just all kind of interconnected and working together. I don't know, I got a lot of time on my hands. I think a lot about fire. <laughs> Yeah, this is just this is just the way. 